The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. The cigarette that's toasted to taste better. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste yet. It's the toasted cigarette. This is Don Wilson. I'd like you to listen to just the last part of that song once again. It's the toasted cigarette. That's one important reason the Lucky tastes better. It's toasted. The fine tobacco that goes into every Lucky is toasted to taste better. It's toasted. The famous Lucky Strike process brings Lucky's fine tobacco to its peak of flavor, tones up this light, mild, and naturally good-tasting tobacco to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. That's why we say this. If you want real enjoyment from your cigarette, make it Lucky Strike. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste, yet it's the toasted cigarette. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight Jack Benny does his television show, but meanwhile, we have a radio program to do. You know, almost every morning before breakfast, Jack takes a nice long walk through Beverly Hills. It's early in the morning, and right now he's in the midst of his walk. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Ah, gee, it's nice walking this early in the morning. Nobody is up. Everything's so quiet and peaceful. <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? That sparrow must be building a nest. He's gathering things for it. Oh, look, he's carrying a little piece of Kleenex. <laughs> Wait a minute, he's not building a nest. He's wiping his eyes. The smog is awful today. <laughs> Yep, it really is bad. (laughs) Ah, but it feels good going out so early. Everything is so pretty. I like living in Beverly Hills. Gosh, look at that. I haven't seen a horse and wagon for years. I'll never forget the first time I was driving my Maxwell and we passed a horse and wagon. And my car scared the horse. Come to think of it, it scared the wagon, too. (laughs) The driver looks kind of familiar. I know that face. Hi, Rube. Sure, it's my farmer friend from Calabasas. What are you doing here in Beverly Hills? I'm on my way back home. Oh, what'd you come to town for? Yesterday, I went down to the radio studio to appear on a new quiz program. Take it or milk it. Oh But that ain't the first time I've been on radio A couple of months ago, my wife told me she'd like a Bendix on the farm So I won one and brought it home with me Ah, but that made her happy, yeah? No, I brought home the wrong Bendix She wanted William (laughs) (laughs) Get it? I got it, I got it You ain't the first sucker who fell for that one, Rube. Hey, by the way, I meant to ask you something. I've never been in Calabasas. Pretty small place, isn't it? Sure is. They even have a special Burma shave sign for the town. Oh, what does it say? If you sneeze or blink or remove your glasses, you'll miss the town of Calabasas. (laughs) Hey, that's pretty good. Well, I better run along now. See you again. So long, Rube. So long. (laughs) Yeah, I wonder... Why he always calls me Rube. <laughs> oh, well, I better get home. Oh, what a beautiful morning. I wonder who 
whose house this is on the corner? Oh, it's Jane Russell's. She has such a high fence around her because she takes a sun bath every day. If I had the wings of an angel... <laughs> Not only. And there's Phil Harris's house. He has a nice weather vane he put up on his chimney. An old crow. <laughs> Why didn't he use a bird instead of a bottle? <laughs> well, I better walk a little faster. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Ah, Rochester, that was really a good breakfast. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Mr. Benny. I sure did. Well, if you're done eating, maybe you ought to check this list with me. I'm going shopping. Now, what do we need from the market? Canned goods, meats, vegetables, everything. Well, let me see the list. One loaf of bread, five pounds of sugar, a bottle of ketchup, a box of cornflakes, five pounds of flour, three boxes of Jello. Jello? Yeah, after all these years, we finally ran out. <laughs> Okay. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Coming, coming. Oh, hello, Don. Hi, Jack. I came over about the commercial. Oh, well, come on in. Hey, wait a minute. If you came over about the commercial, where are the sportsmen? I've asked them to wait out in the car, Jack. I want to speak to you about a personal matter first. Oh, what is it? Well, Jack, I, I don't like to trouble you with this, but I still haven't received my salary check for last week's show. Oh, gee, well. Did you talk to my business manager? No, no, I couldn't. They're having a riot up there, and the warden cut off all communication. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I can lend you some money till things settle down on the rock. Huh? <laughs> Now, bring the quartet in and let me hear the commercial. Jack, won't you come out to the car? They're all packed up. They're going away. It'll save a lot of trouble. Oh, are they leaving for someplace? Yeah. Well, all right. Come on, I'll go out to the car. Wait a minute, Jack. Jack, what's that? Oh, next door, the Coleman's electric fence. Every time I come out of the house, it goes on. <laughs> hey, hiya, fellas. Boys, how about letting Jack hear your commercial? Yeah. We ain't got a barrel of money Maybe we're ragged and funny But we we'll travel along Singing a song side by side Don't know what's coming tomorrow Maybe it's trouble and sorrow But we we'll travel the road Sharing our load side by side Through all kinds of weather what if the sky should fall Just as long as we're together It doesn't matter at all When they've all had their quarrels and parted We'll be the same as we started Just traveling along Singing a song side by side As you know, we've been working for Benny That's why we haven't a penny But the lucky to come we're happy enough, side by side. Luckies are always so pleasing. Finer tobacco's a reason. Give us luckies a match, four on a match, side by side. Lucky strikes taste better. They're cleaner and fresher, too. Lucky strikes are so much smoother. Your finest smoke, it is true. Better taste in a lucky we posted. One reason is that it's toasted. We want to repeat. Nothing can beat. Lucky. was fine. You know, that'll be a great number on the program. But then when you do it on the show, maybe you can get a little more bounce into it. 
And then that way... Jack, you say, Jack, uh, that's your phone ringing. Oh, my goodness, and Rochester isn't home. Excuse me, Don, I better run in the house and answer it. So long, fellas. Hello? Hello? Can you tell me what television program you're watching now? Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not watching television right now. Oh, I see. Well, did you look at television last night? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. Would you mind telling me what programs you watched? Uh, let's see. Uh, Robert Montgomery and Burns and Allen. Oh, would you mind telling me all about them? I don't have a set. <laughs> Well, Gracie wanted... Oh, goodbye! <laughs> of all the silly things. Imagine. There's a nerve of that guy calling up and asking me to tell him about television shows. I get the craziest phone calls. If I didn't have such a good laundry business, I'd get an unlisted number. <laughs> Maybe I ought to have my name taken out of the phone book anyway. Or at least out of the yellow pages. <laughs> I wonder if every... Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. How are you feeling? Fine, fine. It's a nice day today, isn't it? It sure is. If it's a nice day tomorrow, will you come and visit me? <laughs> visit you? Where are you? In jail. That's nice. Now, Dennis, when you do your song next Sunday... Well, Mr. I'll... Benny, aren't you excited or anything? I may be here for 20 years. Good, good. Now, Dennis, <laughs> when you do your... Well, gee, aren't you worried? Dennis, you've been calling me up with a lot of silly talk for so many years that I never believe one word you say. You make up the silliest, most absurd things I've ever heard. And I'd be a fool if I thought for one minute... I gotta hang up now. We're going to lunch. <laughs> Wait a minute, Dennis Those marching feet Dennis, you mean you're really in jail? No, Mr. Benny, I was only kidding I'm at the studio You see, we're making a television picture about a prison riot And I'm playing the part of an escaping convict Ooh. 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 Dennis, what's happening? Dress rehearsal <laughs> Oh, oh, well, then I better hang up. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> that, must, that must be some picture he's making. Well, I got a lot of time on my hands today. I don't know what to do. Maybe I'll go out to my golf course and... Nah, I already did a lot of walking this morning. I'm a little too tired to carry all those clubs. No matter how much they tip me. <laughs> Can't practice my violin, it's broken It's too early to go to bed I think I'll go in my library and read a book Yeah, a lot of books here Most of them have been bestsellers, too Not as a Stranger, The Cane Mutiny Here's one, I Looked and I Listened by Ben Gross Treadmill to Oblivion by Fred Allen <laughs> yeah, It sure is a funny book you know, it's a strange thing, on account of that feud we had, so many people think that Fred Allen hates and despises me. Unfortunately, Fred happens to be one of those people. <laughs> you hear some books I've saved from the time I was a kid. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Tom Swift and His Electric Rifle. Oh, here's one that was given to me by my father. What every boy should know. <laughs> I remember Papa gave it to me because he was too embarrassed to tell me about the birds and the bees. The bees go around getting honey out of the flowers. What's so embarrassing about that? <laughs> Maybe I should have read the second chapter. <laughs> Say, here's a book I haven't read. The Mystery of the Elephant's Graveyard 
Hey, that sounds like an exciting book. Now sit down and read this one. The Mystery of the Elephant's Graveyard, Chapter One. <laughs> Air, but by desire, an explorer, and a big game hunter. When I decided to locate the elephant's graveyard, I was warned of the many dangers lurking in the heart of darkest Africa. So I took precautions. For the fierce animals, I had a powerful rifle. For the dreaded disease of malaria, I had a huge supply of quinine. And for the fierce natives who shrink human heads, I had my head sanferized. <laughs> On the 41st day of our journey, we were hacking our way through dense jungle undergrowth when suddenly the native porter stopped and started a discontented murmur. I turned to my partner and said, What's wrong with the natives, Wilson? I don't know. I'll ask them. Uga Muga Nagila Bwana Nula Angara Nuga Nuga Mala Milala Hananawal He says the men refuse to go any further. They're hungry. For 15 days, they've had no food or drink. It was their own fault. I told them to join the diner's club. <laughs> Ask them how far it is to the elephant's graveyard. Nawila Muga Lakuta Miwa Buga Bugo Narwa Magua he says it's a three-day journey if you go by the mountain route, but if you take the shortcut by the river... <laughs> it's only two days, providing you don't run into the unfriendly pygmy tribes or crocodiles. Magua means all that? <laughs> yes, Magua? Isn't there a Buna Buna with it? <laughs> yes, Magua? Buna. Boga puna lakuta oga nagaleb buana angara buga mawa chichi umga makola nula. If that means yes, I'll punch him right in the nose. He said, "Give me some Kleenex. The smog is killing me." <laughs> oh yes, he used to be a sparrow. <laughs> Come on, let's get going. Hey, the natives are restless. We better get them some food and quickly, too. Okay, come on. Let's go hunt some. Come on, follow me. This looks like a good place to hunt. Careful now, this undergrowth. Look out for those thorns. They're very long. Yeah. Ouch! Did you tear your shirt? I would have if I had a shirt on. <laughs> anyway, I don't mind. Why in the world would you take your shirt off going through this dense underbrush? Shirts cost money. Skin I can grow. <laughs> was a huge success. We got an antelope, a lion, a buffalo, and a tiger. Oh, I know the tigers are only found in India, but this one had been on a quiz program and won two glorious weeks in Africa. <laughs> the men were delighted with the food, and we camped there for the night. The night seemed endless. I could not sleep. In addition to the usual sounds of the jungle, the air was rent by the roar of a lion. <laughs> The snort of the water buffalo. The chatter of the monkeys. <laughs> the snarl of a panther. And the weird plaintive cry of the giraffe. The weird plaintive cry of the giraffe. Mel. That uh, giraffe don't make no noise. <laughs> well, then do a sparrow again, anything. <laughs> the laugh of the hyena. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
a southern hyena yet. <laughs> In the morning, the men were refreshed, and we traveled all the next day. And it was towards dusk that we came to a little clearing in the jungle. And there she stood. Thank goodness, at last you found me. She was beautiful. And although she had been traveling for many days through the dense jungle, her clothes were not the least bit ripped. Fortunately, she had encountered no thorns. Fortunately? <laughs> Then she began to speak. Oh, I'm so glad. After all these days of traveling through this horrible jungle, hiding from the animals, avoiding the natives, fighting off all the dangers, and now you found me, and I'm safe. Don't be too sure. <laughs> Now tell me, what are you doing here in the jungle? I came to Africa on a scientific expedition with Professor Ludwig von Krauss, but his lust for power got the better of him. He has set himself up as king of a native tribe. He wanted me to be his queen, but I escaped. Nagula Hilamawa. What's that? Me messenger. Me look for you many moons. Me bring you this message. Wait a minute. I'm in the uncharted jungles of Africa. How did you ever find me? Me find them your address in yellow pages. <laughs> oh. What's the message say? It's from the British Home Office in Equatorial Africa. It said, beware of Professor Ludwig von Krauss. He's preparing to take over all of Africa. The warning came too late. Because just then we were surrounded by a horde of screaming savages who took us captive and brought us into the presence of the cruel, ambitious professor. He looked at us and said, Down on your knees, you verstunkene Schweinhund! <laughs> you are in the presence of the great Professor Ludwig von Krauss. Now look. Kneel, you dumb cuff. I am the great von Krauss, discoverer of penicillin, inventor of atomic energy, and just this morning, I have made the greatest scientific discovery of the century. What's that? I have perfected brew 103. <laughs> hmm. Now I have made up my mind what to do on you there, Thornton. The Shana girl I will keep, but the rest of you I'm going to throw to the crocodiles. No, 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 don't keep me. That would be a fate worse than death. Throw me to the crocodiles, too. Who was that? The crocodiles. <laughs> Now, look. Shut up. Oh, you make me so mad. <laughs> now, come here. Come and see here, Fraulein, and sit on this throne here beside me. Wait a minute. Why do you want to kill all the men and just keep her? You better go home and read the second chapter of what every boy should know. Oh, no, you don't. Now, don't make a move. I've got you covered with this gun. Look out. His guard is throwing a spear at you. The spear went through me just as my bullet killed him. Although I was lucky that the spear didn't go through my heart, the doctors had bad news for me. It would be fatal to remove it. So for all these years, I've been going around with a spear sticking out. This doesn't bother me normally. But at a party, whenever we play charades, everyone guesses that I'm an hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> that is my story. Yes, I, like all those before me, fail to find the elephant's graveyard. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, when a fella needs a friend, he needs a helping hand. And the hands of the big brothers have helped thousands of growing boys to find the way to a useful life. Since the first Big Brother movement was formed in 1904, to the many thousands of men who daily volunteer to help, I say congratulations for a job well done. If you are interested in being a Big Brother to some needy boy, write Big Brothers of America, Philadelphia 3, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute to tell you about his television program, which goes on at 7 p.m. tonight over the CBS television network. But first, the sweetheart of Lucky Strike, Miss Dorothy Collins. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste yet. It's the toasted... Cigarettes, they take fine Tobacco, it's light Tobacco, it's mild Tobacco, too And it's toasted, yes, it's toasted Because the toasting brings the flavor right through So to get better taste from your cigarette Lucky Strike is the brand to get It's toasted to give you the best taste Yet it's the toasted Cigarette. Friends, your enjoyment of a cigarette is just as simple as that. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to taste better. Naturally, Lucky's better taste begins just where you'd expect it to begin, with fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then, that tobacco is toasted. It's toasted. The famous Lucky Strike process tones up Lucky's naturally good-tasting tobacco to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. So next time, get better taste. Get Lucky Strike. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste. Yes, it's the toasted cigarette. What are you doing, Jack? Oh, I'm calling my writers. What do you want them for? I have to do my television show tonight, and I can't ad-lib my way out of Africa. What? (laughs) Angara, new goo. That means he'll see you on television, folks. Don't forget to watch it. Yeah. Jack Benny Show tonight was written by Milt Josephsberg, John Tackerberry, Hal Goldman, Al Gordon, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Filter smokers, true tobacco taste, real filtration, famous Tariton quality. They're all yours when you smoke Filter Tip Tariton. Filter Tip Tariton gives you all the full, rich taste of Tariton's quality tobacco and real filtration, too. Because Filter Tip Tariton incorporates activated charcoal, renowned for its unusual powers of selective filtration. Look for the red, white, and blue stripes on the package. They identify Filter Tip Tariton, the best in filtered smoking. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. <laughs>